What was the best game of the first half for the Cubs? We talk about it next. You are Locked On Cubs, your daily Chicago Cubs podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Our Locked On Cubs, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Alongside Sam Olber, I'm Matt Cozy. Please support the show and be a part of the Locked On Cubs community by following on, on your preferred audio platform. And you can watch, subscribe, and leave a comment on YouTube. Thanks so much for making us your first listen. Sam and I are lifelong fans, taking our passion into discussion with you on all things Cubs. Today's Tuesday episode is presented by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On MLB for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed with Game Time. Episodes this week, Tuesday through Friday, as the Cubs exit the first half and enter the second. Cubs won Sunday to take two or three from the Yankees. They were down four to one entering the seventh inning and produced an impressive comeback in the final three frames to win seven to four. Cubs finished the first half five games under 500 at 42 and 47 and are seven games back of first place in the NL Central. A lot from this game, Sam. We did our first ever live game cast, so a lot of the details here happened uh, as we witnessed it live, and I'll put the link to the, the live game cast in the description of this show if people haven't. Uh, see that yet would love if you check that out and, and uh, let us know first and second one out top of the seventh Christopher Morrell hits a routine grounder to second Glaber Torres bobbles it for an error and that was the turning point of this game as a later Jan Gomes hit a two out two run single to tie it Cubs took the lead in the eighth when when Seiya Suzuki hit a uh, sacrifice fly with the bases loaded and no outs and this type of comeback, maybe a little bit of a victim of circumstance, Sam, might have been the best game of the first half for the Cubs. Yeah, um, I would push back on that rather hard, but it was a uh, it was a it was a great game because they won, and we got a chance to be a, a large part of it. Um, I thought yesterday, I thought Sunday's game was was probably the most fun I've had since we've taken over the show. It was really kind of me and my element. Um, it was a nice win. It was a nice series win. Um, Which they haven't been able to do on Sundays. Right, right. For me, my – so we haven't done best and worst since like 1987. Right. Um, if I had to do a best and worst, if I had to pick one game each – from the first half. The easy answer is the Seattle comeback. I have that written down as well. Uh, that's the easy one. But I'll say for me, I'll say that that win on Friday, not just because I was there, but in Los Angeles early in the year when they just beat the snot out of them. Because at that point, we hadn't had really many rough losses. So, and it was kind of just like a statement game. It was Suzuki's first game back. I didn't realize that the Dodgers at that point were going to have kind of a down year by their standards. And when when they went in there, and, and, and really that whole series, when they won two out of three there, that was kind of the first time where I remember I was on the plane home, and I was like, wow, like, you know, this could be a really fun season. Um the list of the worst games of the year is is, is too many to too many to yeah, mention. Yeah, it's too many to mention. And well, I, it's a list. That's a it, problem. Yeah, the 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 two that stand out are in Houston and Monday Monday July third in Milwaukee. Those are the two yeah, that that's easy. Those those are the two that stick out above the rest. But I, I I can't get on board with Sunday's game in terms of just being one of the best wins of the year because they're so far behind. It, you know what I mean? Yeah. If if they were if that was like to get them within a few games, I'd be like, you know, all right, you know, right. But but since they're still they still have so much work to do, 
Um, you know, the early wins were the ones for me because that was when I felt like, man, they came back against Seattle. Then they took two out of three in LA and then they beat up on Oakland and it was like, whoa, wait a minute. Here. And seven. Yeah. Ho, ho, hold on. Um, uh-huh. <laughs> and they've actually had Fuck. some, excuse me, sorry. They've actually had oh, some, uh, <laughs> it's like, I, I couldn't help it. They actually have had some really nice wins here recently. Uh, but they don't they don't have the same, you know, the, the Yankees game, the comeback in Milwaukee on Wednesday night. Uh, they just don't have the same impact because they, they got a really, you know, tall mountain to climb. I think you can make the case that the Brewers series had the best and the worst games, the Monday game, blowing the 6-0 lead. Yeah. And then they they somehow make a comeback off Devin Williams on Wednesday for the win. Right. So you could make that case. I also had the Mariners game. They were down 7-1, but it was so early in that game. Right. Uh, they won in a, a softball score, fourteen to nine, and you know I, I I do think that Sunday gives a run for its money just because I enjoy the late comeback. So the Wednesday yeah. game against the Brewers, Sunday game against the Yankees, very the Mariners rare. one was great. I still remember when you called me. I was actually setting up my current station for the show. Right. I was like, oh, they're down seven one. I'm just going to set this up now so we could debut it soon. And sure enough, they came back and, and won that game. But but to your point about maybe it aligning with win-loss record, I did write down the Cubs' first game in London in June against the Cardinals. No, no. A 9-1 win. They crushed them on national TV. Mm-hmm. And at that point, they were only one under 500. Yep. And like and, two back. Uh, no. It was a, a peak point of positivity. They had, that was their 11th win out of 13 games, 11 and two run. Oh, it, that was dang impressive. Yeah, it was. And then it fell off the rails. Um, you know, so it's, it's funny you say that they flashed some stat up there the other day that the Cubs, you know, before that Devin Williams comeback were like, like 135 games in a row or something they've lost when they've been trailing after eight innings. Like yeah. that's that's a bit abnormal. Like I get it. You're supposed you're not supposed to win those games at all. Right. But you know, every fifty or sixty, you think you run into one. <laughs> you think you'd want run into sure, one. Sure, sure. Uh, it, it just yeah, maybe you, like one a season, right? Yeah, you know, it's been such a, it's been such a interesting roller coaster emotional first half and. And and I don't think that's coming from a place of somebody that talks about the team every day for the show. I I think most fans feel that way from the twelve and seven start yeah. to the disaster May to the really hot June and then the comeback down to earth and and you know just recently they've been starting to win some of these games but really early on in the year if it was close late you mark it down as an L. Um, and it was like that repetitively, especially yeah. as you mentioned May. <laughs> Yeah, and it's you know it's so funny because they're really they're three games back. If if you give them three games, they're over five hundred. You know, some people look at their record. You say, oh well, they're forty two and forty seven. They're not close to five hundred yet. Well, now they're not. But if if they just didn't blow the Houston game and right, two if you other flip ones, the result three yeah, games. Yep, yeah, they're forty five and forty four, which is right. about what you'd have them at right now. Sure. And so well, I, I, I said a successful season was 82 and 80. Yeah. And so it'll be interesting. You know, I, I think I really am glad this is the first time I just told somebody this a couple hours ago on the phone. Um, I'm really glad for the first time in my life. I'm thrilled that there's an all-star break. I, I just need, I just need the mental break. Um, from from just like it feels so it feels nice it's it's six twelve central right now and I don't I'm not you know studying the lineups like I'm Albert Einstein and and that's you know, uh, that's odd for you yeah comparing numbers feel this way and, no it is odd because it's just, it's been taxing it really has been and the cool part is this and we'll talk about this later in the week so I'm not going to divulge too much but these games coming out of the break do matter yeah it's that's not. True. It's not, they're, they're not in a situation where, all right, you know, who, you know, if they take two out of three against the, you know, the car mines and then they sweep, uh, that's what Hawk used to call the Red Sox. Yeah, okay. uh, and then they sweep the Nationals, you know, that Cardinal series is going to have the, uh, an insane atmosphere. That'll be great. Because Cincinnati's going to lose some games. 
Yeah, but I'll tell you what, they got to, you know, it's hard for me to, to agree with that, but I, I do think they will, but uh, they, they might be the 2015 Cubs. A lot of people that are Cub fans, like yourself, are like so high on the Cincinnati team. Well, but and, it's also the coach in me, dude. Yeah, and, and, I, and, I, and, I, and I respect it, and I, and, and I come back and say, who cares? Like let's well, that's great. That's what makes you you. Dude. I hope they lose every game the rest of the year and play the best baseball possible. How's that? I'm personally three and one on this campaign. Uh, uh-huh. Two nothing win over the Rangers in April. Seven uh-huh. two win over the Mets in May. Ten three win over the Orioles in June, and an eight five loss just a couple of weeks ago to the Phillies. I'm looking to improve to four and one on the campaign. Uh, possibly as soon as this Friday against the Red Sox, um, but but maybe maybe we hold out and go to one of those Cardinals games. Yeah, I'll leave that up to you. Um, what you want to do? I mean, for me, if I had a choice, I, I don't really like like I'm kind of just going because I, I know you. It, it would be almost inappropriate if you and I didn't attend a game together this year, considering we do a show. Inappropriate. Yeah. Um, so, so whatever you'd like, I mean, I, you know, I, it would be nice if like the, the ticket prices came down for Friday night's game. They're very high for Friday. Yeah. Night's game. No. Um, wait, so you went to the Rangers game? Yeah. Was first that, Friday game of the year. That wasn't a seven, two game. It was a two, nothing win. Oh, you said, Oh, two. Oh yeah. Yeah. Stroman on the, on the bump. I believe Bell, Bellins are an RBI single in that game. And, and then, then the, the, my next game was with Kaz seven, two win over the Mets. Was that a? Ooh, I'm trying to. It was on a that. Tuesday evening. Was that a? Was that Sanga got knocked around in that game, or or I can't remember. Um, I don't. Anyway, I don't. Think or was so. it? Or was it Smiley pitching that? Smiley game? pitch, dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so that that was Smiley versus McGill. <laughs> yeah, Smiley versus McGill in that game. And then and that, uh, that Sanga Strowman, I think, was the next day. And then I went also on a Friday in June against the Orioles, 10-3, massive yeah, win. that was a route. That was when they hit all the home runs when they were interviewing hey. Ross. I, I want to say that was – I remember uh, the pitchers for both clubs, if you want to guess. Yeah, yeah. Uh, just give me a sec, all right? You know? So Steele threw that Saturday. Tyone threw that Sunday, um, which obviously only makes – Oh, that was a uh, – Hendricks threw that game. Yes, he did. Yeah, and then who threw for Baltimore that got roughed up? It wasn't Kremer, and it wasn't – oh, it was that guy Irvin. <laughs> yeah, wow, nice job. Man. Yeah, he got crushed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so uh, just want to share a little bit more about our game cast from Sunday. Oh, what a here's, time. Here's a clip when Jan Gomes hit the two-run single to tire. Oh, two pitch. Goes with a little blooper to center field. This is going to get round. It's going to score one. Here comes the second runner. We're tied at four. Yo! Get a four yard. Get a four yard. Come on. (laughs) You know, if you don't like that, you don't like life. 300 plus were with us at the peak. Um, uh, Yeah, I was really happy to do that with you. You know, it that had like a lot of like Ron Sano stuff to me. It's okay, like, yeah, yeah, some Sano vibes for sure. Yeah, man, it was so, so funny. We'll try so to do at, that again at some point this campaign. Yeah, no, no, we will. Um, <laughs> real quick. So after the after the cast ended, they were in a delay, and I was driving, and then the delay ended quickly. So I listened to you know Pat and and, and Coomer. Yes. Man, what a difference it is! Th- those, those guys, the, the cues, the calmness. You really yeah. sometimes you wonder in life, hey, why is that guy a professional, whatever, and I'm this? I could do that. Was not thinking that on that car ride. Let me tell you, <laughs> you know what I mean. <laughs> Pretty clear yeah. and obvious how difficult that job is. My goodness. Right. Oh, I also went to. I've been to Wrigley five times actually. I also went to a Fall Out Boy show. Here's the. Here's the shirt. So, so that uh, so you're three and two. Three and one with the concert. That was an amazing concert, dude. Yeah, that's a loss. So and I might be going to an Iowa football game there this November as well. I'm one and one, and both tilts were at the Shavaz Ravine. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So uh coming up next, the Cubs drafted a shortstop from the Big Ten Conference. We tell you who that is coming up next. 
Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Buying tickets to your favorite event shouldn't be stressful. Game Time is the fast and easy way to buy tickets for all the sports, music, comedy, and theater near you. With killer deals and last-minute tickets and their best price guarantee, you can stop stressing over the tickets and start getting hyped for the fun you'll have. Forget planning months in advance. Game Time has deals on tickets right up to the day of the event. Download the Game Time app, create an account, use code LOCKDOWNMLB for $20 off your first purchase. Terms do apply. Again, creating the account, redeem code LOCKDOWNMLB for $20 off. Download the Game Time app today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed with Game Time. With the 13th pick in the 2023 MLB draft, the Cubs selected Maryland shortstop Matt Shaw in his junior year with the Terrapins this season. Shaw slashed 341, 445, 697 with 24 home runs, 20 doubles in 62 games. Had more walks than strikeouts and stole 18 bases for good measure as well. Shaw was the Big Ten Player of the Year. Uh, Lindsey Crosby and Jeff Ellis did some great work for the network here at Locked On. Ellis and, loved uh, them. Ellis loved them. They did post a clip to our channel, uh, so you could check that out as well. Aside from that, you know, I I, I think we'll pursue having one of those dudes on when the yeah. draft is over and the yeah. summer moves along with prospects as well. Yeah, but this guy can hit. Yeah, I was glad they took a, took a guy that, that's more of a polished hitter. You know, the, the two big things, you know, more walks than strikeouts is always a good sign that's going to translate, you know. It's so rare nowadays. Yeah, to, to being a really good big league hitter. And then the thing that sticks out is, like, true power. He had a 507-foot home run, I think, in a game against in Iowa the Hawkeyes. City. Yeah. It almost um, hit Carver-Hawkeye Arena across the street. Almost hit Fran. The combination of power and contact – to be plus in both those things in today's game is extremely rare. Um, so to invest in a guy like that, I, I think is smart. Um, the only thing I like to say is I, I, it bothers me that, that we refer to Maryland as part of the big 10 conference. Um, I know okay. it is, well, that's you know, you know, I, show. no, I know it is. I know it is, but you know, it's an ACC. Well, no, school. it is weird. I'm a big uh, 10. Yeah. Yeah. Native. No, so am I. I live, right. I live this stuff. And, you know, just to hear you say Big Ten shortstop player of the year and you went to an ACC school. So, but no, <laughs> really excited. Well, it takes some getting you. Well, Rucker shouldn't be in. Sorry. Rucker shouldn't be in the Big Ten either. Oh, Rutgers. I thought you were talking They're, about Michael Rutgers Rucker. Rutgers is more egregious too. No, it is. But you said <laughs> it's kind of like Rucker. You know, and then you got Nebraska. Well, then, and then pretty soon you're going to have USC and UCLA. I mean, you might as well just Next make it year. The, the big country. Right. Just uh, put the whole nation in there. Yes, but so. just say I play one conference. Uh, All right. Bit, well, I digress. A little bit of trivia here. How many current Cubs players were first round picks? Do you have a number? Oh, uh, you no, don't need to I, give names. I'll take. They'll, we'll do an hour show. So. Well, that guy. I. That's just. That's a hard question to just come up with a number. I mean, Dansby was a was number one overall. Right. You got to talk through it. I got you. Nico was Nico a first? I think yes. he was. Yeah. That's um, two. Belly. Um, Belly's not on here. Sam. Oh, he wasn't a first round pick. No. Uh, I don't know. Four, ten, ten first round picks. Let me give you the ten with their teams. It's kind of a blast from the past. Boxberger with the Reds. Oh, come on. Tyone with the Pirates. Oh, of course. Tyone was second. I think he went between like Harper and Machado or something like that. Wow. Or Fulmer with the Mets. Ugh. Strowman with the Blue Jays. Oh, Strowman was the first one. Wisdom with the Cardinals. Half with the Cardinals. Oh, come on. That's a big accomplishment. Yeah, boy. St. Louis, you want to talk about an yeah. overrated uh, uh, scouting system. Half right? with Wouldn't... the Cubs. They traded away Rosa Reina, too. That's <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, no, mute yourself, for God's sake. Swanson with the Diamondbacks. I apologize. Oh, yeah, then he got traded. Anthony K, 2016 <laughs> first rounder with the Mets. Horner with the Cubs and Nick Madrigal. Oh, sure. Michael K with the White Sox. Yeah. Coming up next, a little couple notes on uh, sports media coverage and, and layoffs in the industry. We talk about that next briefly. Right, right after this. 
Today's episode is also brought to you by BetterHelp. Sometimes in life, we're faced with tough choices, and the path forward isn't always clear. Whether you're dealing with decisions around career, relationships, or anything else, therapy helps you stay connected to what you really want to navigate life. Trusting yourself to make decisions that align with your values is like anything. The more you practice it, the easier it gets. If you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Let therapy be your map with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash MLB to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash MLB. Justin Steele in the All-Star Game on Tuesday. We'll recap that for Wednesday's episode. Sounds like he's going to pitch the second or third inning. That is the only Cub that's going to play in that game after Swanson and Stroman bowed out. Swanson, due to his left heel contusion, and uh, Stroman due, uh, really, that he's in a contract year and wants to just chill this week and rest, I think. Hey, Matt, before yeah. you get into what you're going to say, I'd like to say this. If you're healthy, if you're healthy, and you decline to participate in the All-Star game, you should have the All-Star honor and designation taken from you. Okay. No, I'm serious. I, I didn't think you were joking. No, no. I, I just, I just, it's such an honor to become a major league All-Star. And, and I'm sure. Now there's, there's like 50 a year. Yeah, now there's like 50 of them because these guys, and I get it, Swanson can't play. But like, you know, it's not just Strowman. Like a lot of these guys, you know, it's just. The, yeah, the, it bothers you. The, yeah, because we, we keep hearing about how everybody's got all these trainers and nutrition and everything's the best it's ever been. And you right. look around in sports and everybody gets injured the most and needs the most rest. It makes no sense to me. No, it doesn't add up. Michael Jordan was eating McDonald's in the 80s and 90s and playing 82 basketball games a year. I, I don't understand. He ate McDonald's, that. really? Yeah, well, he didn't like have a my, yeah. He didn't really have like a great nutrition system. Right, right, right. His nutrition wasn't exactly a strong suit. We just keep talking about how everybody's bigger, stronger, and faster, and guys are just the, the, the least available they've ever been. Hey, wanted to take a minute or two. That's it uh, about sports media right now. All star break. We might uh, you know go into some different topics here, more open waters. Sports media, big time in flux right now. It really has been for a while, but. Uh, the last 30 days, it's really been amplified. A former reporter myself uh, back in back in Iowa City after my college days and, and being in journalism, that was my first career. Um, and even back then, you know, the, the ladder to kind of ascend and, and whatnot was, was, was limited, especially in a market, a smaller market. Sure, it helps to be in a bigger one, but not necessarily. And it really is in flux right now with multiple companies having layoffs, including three highly publicized ones recently, The Athletic, ESPN, and on Monday, The New York Times announced they're getting rid of their sports uh, department completely. Um, definitely from a journalism standpoint, not, not thrilled by it. Um, but also, you know, David Locke, who, who created this, this network, and he's also the radio voice, of, of the Utah Jazz, one of one of Sam's favorite uh, non Chicago teams, um, is a very unique model. And Locked On put out a quote today. Uh, Lock the quote Locked On will continue to increase our coverage of your team, your team's games, your team's players, and your team's league. Locked On is your team every day. Close quote. That was from David Locke, founder and CEO. Uh, of the network interested how coverage would be increased considering literally all four major sports leagues teams have a show and, and some colleges uh, 20 to 30 minutes a day, five days a week, um, you know, for, for almost 95% of the network, it's not a full-time job, you know, just based on how the model is set up right now in terms of, uh, you know, that end of it. But, you know, we do want to be your first listen. We do want to be your team every day. We do want to be the voice of the fan. And I think this show is a prime example of that and genuine enthusiasm for the team and, and citing sources. You know, The Athletic is probably the most cited publication on this show. And I, I also just think the Gamecast Sunday is an example of really where sports media could be going. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, it'd be great to do this 40 hours a week. But in the scale that we're at, where this network's at, I, I think it's a good time to be with this network. It's unfortunate about the layoffs, but we're going to do everything in our power to cover the Cubs the right way. So I wanted to give a, f- a couple moments on that, and uh, that will do it uh, for today. Shout out as, to every day. As Master Boney taps one on the ground to first, this is going to be taken unassisted. We'll go to the fifth. Boston four, Chicago one. <laughs> I hope not. I'm hopefully sorry. Magical and Swanson get activated this weekend, man. Yeah, and hopefully I, you know, find a $100 bill on the ground. I don't know. <laughs> Shout out to the Everydayer show with us all five episodes throughout the week. And you can be coming every day by checking us out each and every weekday. Be sure to hit that subscribe button for Locked On Cubs on YouTube and smash the like button for the algorithm as we now make the push to 5,000 subs. It's coming. Apple, Spotify, wherever you get your podcast and streaming on Sirius XM. He's Sam Olber. Yep. I'm Matt Cozy. This is Locked On Cubs. Cubs.